Salam and good morning I bid to Mr. Adjudicator, side opposition and my fellow teammates. This is the Prime Minister from the Government and as first speaker from the Government, I will start today's debate by explaining on several matters pertinent to today's debate motion. In terms of the lineup of arguments, as Prime Minister, I will first establish the debate and provide an overview of the right to freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia that is adequately guaranteed in our democracy as well as the sufficient safeguards provided in our constitution to protect this right. Then, my Deputy Prime Minister will deliver her rebuttals and the second argument from the government on today's motion. And subsequently, three of my government will will provide further arguments from the government that are more comprehensive with regards to today's debate motion, as well as rebut the respective opposition's arguments. The topic of today's motion is freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia. The freedom of speech and expression is generally accepted and understood under the law as a combination of many rights and forms, and thus, communication by word of mouth, signs, symbols and gestures as well as artwork, photographs, films, books, newspaper, press, and more, are all part of free speech and expression. The government's stand with regards to the motion is that freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy, and the constitution has provided sufficient safeguards to protect this right. The right to freedom of speech and expression is guaranteed in our democracy through its constitutional protections. Federal Constitution, by virtue of Article 4, Clause 1, is the supreme law of the land, and any law passed after Independence Day that is inconsistent with the Constitution shall be void to the extent of the inconsistency. Hence, the right to freedom of speech and expression is sufficiently guaranteed and safeguarded by Article 10, Clause 1A of the Federal Constitution, which provides that every citizen has the right to freedom of speech and expression. As Article 10 employs the words every citizen instead of any person, this right is exclusive to only natural and legal persons who are citizens of the country, as well as legal entities. The exclusive nature of this right for all citizens of Malaysia thus safeguards and ensures the inherent right to participate in democracy by forming an opinion, communicating this opinion, as well as seeking and sharing information through various means of transmission. Further, any as being enshrined under Part 2 of the Constitution, this right is regarded as a fundamental liberty which are rights provided to every citizen of the country and which cannot be restricted, restricted or infringed by the government or by parliament without justifiable grounds under the Constitution itself. Now, emphasizing again the recognition of this right under the law as having many forms, the Constitution safeguards the right to free speech and expression for the person acting as the transmitter of the message, the receiver, as well as the mode of transmission, which includes all forms of communication, be it by speech, signs, symbolic speech, artwork, films, media, press, and more. Hence, this includes also the right to seek information as well as freedom of press and association. However, as no right is absolute, the right of freedom of speech and expression does indeed have its restrictions under Clause 2, 3, and 4 to Article 10 of the Federal Constitution. But even then, no restrictions can be imposed by Parliament unless as provided by the Constitution itself. That is, it must be provided by law and it is necessary and proportionately enforced to achieve legitimate aims such as for the interests of national, se national security, friendly relations with other countries, public order or morality, and protection of the privileges of parliament or restrictions to prevent expressions creating contempt of court, defamation or incitement to any offence. Hence, it is in itself a constitutional safeguard that no restriction to free speech and expression can be imposed without first fulfilling the requirements and procedures provided by the constitution itself. Therefore, the right to freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy by the constitutional protections provided for it in the federal constitution. Specifically, Part 2 of the constitution, Article 10, Clause 1A. With that being said, we simply push and discharge the burden to the opposition side, 
wherein we require them to prove that freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has not provided safeguards to protect this right. Thank you. Everyone has right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this debate. The motion for debate today is freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has provided sufficient safeguard to protect the right. We as opposition today strongly believe that this is not true and we have structured our case as follows. I, as the first speaker, will be talking about freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in our democracy because an individual's rights of expression in social media is restricted and the constitution does not provide sufficient safeguard to protect the, to protect the right. Our second speaker will elaborate on the fact that the government still limits freedom of speech and expression for the press and media through laws. And our third speaker will explain about hate speech is being used for the political agenda and interest of certain political groups despite the restriction imposed. And our last speaker will be elaborate on the fact that the freedom of speech provided under constitution is not absolute and can be restricted by the parliament. Before I come to my own argument, let us first have a look what Prime Minister of the Proposition have said. The first speaker of proposition has mentioned about freedom of speech and also expression that was laid down in federal constitution. We have no problem with the rights provided and also the restriction laid down in the provision itself. Nevertheless, we as opposition not agree that federal constitution had adequately enough protect the right as the law silence on freedom given in social media and online platform. The laws itself did not provide sufficient guideline for the users that are where there are also cases of 15 years old student was investigated for like a Facebook page called I Love Israel. However, there was no further action taken against him. And this raised a confusion as to how broad the laws actually work on determining the freedom of speech and expression made by an individual and on what ground a person can actually be detained or questioned in his online posting as also did not clear enough. And we as the opposition believe that proposition has not prepared enough in claiming the federal constitution has sufficiently protected the freedom of speech and expression as what they have briefly mentioned is about what the rights provided and also restriction mentioned. Therefore, come to my first argument. Freedom of speech is a notion that supports an individual or a community right to express their belief and idea without a fear of punishment, censorship or also legal or repercussion. Under UDHR, which is United Decla uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights and International Human Rights Law, they mentioned that everyone shall have the right to freedom of speech and also the op uh, to hold their opinion without interference and everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression and then this include freedom to seek, receive, impart information in any uh, and either in writing, in print or also any other media that uh, according to his choice. On the other hand, in Malaysia, under our federal constitution, Malaysia uh, refers free speech as freedom of speech and expression. This mentioned under Article 10, under Clause 1, which every citizen has the right to freedom of speech and also expression. And Malaysian citizens also subjected to the restriction under Article 10, Clause 2, Clause 3 and also Clause 4. However, the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in our democracy as they have no rules about uh, the society when they want to express their opinion of freedom of choice in social media. Firstly, in Malaysia, an individual's right to express in social media is not mentioned in the federal constitution. We can see the uses of social media is increasing year by year where according to Digital 2020, Global Digital Overview, the social media users have passed 3.8 billion mark and this number will increase more than half of the world's total population by half of this year which means on the year of 2020 and now already 2023 which means the number of users is increased more than before. 
so we can see that everyone use social media platform to engage with uh, others in changing material and also express oneself however there are no clear boundaries as to mention in federal constitution in regards to one's individual restriction on making online posting in social media platform recently communication and digital minister Fahmi Fazil said that members of the public are free to create or express creative content on social media as long as they did not touch on sensitivities of three are which is race, religion and also royalty. However, he was silenced as to what extent or how far the law can apply to a person if they were to cross the boundaries or they even if they posting on three as matter. In addition, Malaysia Penal Code, Sedition Act, Peaceful Assembly Act and also Communication and Multimedia Act also contain overboard or vogue word which provide that the, which allowed the police to investigate or arrest people for a wide range of activities or speech that government dislike. And there are also recent cases where have targeted people for organizing public protests, report on allegation of police abuse, and also drawing car uh, cartoon and posting an ironic Spotify playlist. Due to lack of the guidance in legislative law and also regulating online content in filtering in Malaysia, numerous legal mechanisms are used in silence to critique the internet users and also Malaysia should reconsider its policy on online content filtering and control in order for the citizens to enjoy and be adequately protected by freedom of expression on the internet. Political speech restriction also must be reasonable and justifiable where a legislative framework should also be in place to guarantee the internet information is governed lawfully, equitably and also legitimately for the benefit of the public. Therefore, the federal constitution should have safeguarded the freedom of speech and expression adequately and prevent the government from needing to spot stop treating the criticism as a crime and also amend or repeal the abusive laws which being used against critical speech and peaceful protests. And for all this reason, the motion must fall. Assalamualaikum, I bid to Mr. Judy Kitcher, the opposition and my fellow teammates. I am Rania Shah, the Deputy Prime Minister for the Government. The topic of our debate today is that the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy and that the Constitution has provided sufficient safeguards to protect this right. We, the government, believe this statement to be true. The first speaker from the opposition has tried to tell you that the freedom of expression is not adequately guaranteed because an individual's right of expression in social media is restricted and the Constitution does not provide sufficient safeguards to protect this right. While the government does agree that the protection of free speech does apply to online mediums of expression such as social media, we submit that this freedom is not absolute and is subject to the same restrictions to the freedom of speech as other mediums like printed press and broadcasting TV. The first speaker uses examples like the Penal Code, the Sedition Act, and the Communications and Multimedia Act, stating that they contain overbroad and vaguely worded provisions, allowing the executive to arrest people for activities the government dislikes. We submit that this is untrue for two reasons. Firstly, these acts are not mere tools for the government to punish those who dislike them. As pursuant to rule of law, these acts even apply to members of the government themselves. Further, these acts are passed, limiting the freedom of speech based on clear grounds for restriction in the Constitution. For example, Section 3, Subsection 1 of the Sedition Act provides six grounds of what constitutes a seditious tendency pursuant to Clause 2A and Clause 4 of Article 10 of the Federal Constitution. Subsection 2 of Section 3 further provides several types of speech which are not seditious. Pursuant to these laws, the police may only arrest those who clearly overstep the boundaries of free speech as laid down in the federal constitution. In short, any arrest based on these acts is not a punishment of free speech per se, but rather is a punishment of the flagrant abuse of this right. Coming to our submission, our first speaker has already explained that the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is safeguarded by constitutional protections under Article 10, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. Today, I will be talking more about the limitations on two points. Firstly, that the freedom of expression is not an absolute right and must be restricted to protect our democracy. And second, the Federal Constitution provides that any restrictions on the freedom of speech must be legitimate 
non-arbitrary and necessary. Coming to the first point, the freedom of expression cannot be is not an absolute right and must be restricted to protect our democracy. Rajla Aslan Shah laid down in the case of Uyti Saik in 1971 that there cannot be any such thing as an absolute or uncontrolled liberty, wholly free from restraint, for that would lead to anarchy and disorder. The possession and enjoyment of rights is subject to reasonable conditions. The idea that the freedom of speech must be an absolute right is a distortion motivated by self-interest and does not take into account the reason why free speech is protected in the first place. The protection of the freedom of speech and expression is predicated on the idea that in a democracy, all citizens are of, of are equal and as such must be given the opportunity to express their opinion to help the functioning democracy. Following this reasoning, the freedom of speech should not be protected where it is weaponized by any group or individual to incite hate or promote discrimination. Protecting the freedom of speech under these hateful circumstances would be counterintuitive as it contradicts the basis on which free speech is founded. And this is why freedom of speech is not absolute and should be restricted to protect our democracy. However, this brings to the second point whereby the federal constitution provides that these restrictions on the freedom of speech must be legitimate non-arbitrary and necessary. What is a necessary limitation is subjective. However, the underlying reasoning is that the protection of public interests justify the imposition of limitation on individual interests. The grounds for limiting a freedom of speech can be seen in Clause 2A and Clause 4 of Article 10 to the Federal Constitution. Article 10 Clause 2A provides that only Parliament may, by law, impose restrictions on the right of freedom of speech as it deems necessary or expedient on several grounds. For example, to protect the security of the Federation, public order, uh, provide against defamation, and others. As for Article 10 Clause 4, it allows Parliament to pass laws prohibiting the questioning of any matter specifically protected under Articles 152, 153, 181, and Part 3 of the Constitution under Clause 2A, provide, uh, protect the security of the Federation. So from these two clauses, it can clearly be seen that only the federal legislature has the power to limit this freedom. Not only that, Parliament can only limit the freedom based on the aforementioned grounds, the specified grounds. It is argued here that these limitations are necessary to preserve a functioning democracy, especially considering that Malaysia is multicultural with a variety of races. These limitations strike a balance between individual liberty and social control. For example, Clause 4 to Article 10 was necessary if we can see that it was included after amendment in response to the 13 May 1969 racial riots caused by inflammatory speeches made during the 1969 general election. The government does not deny that acts of parliament limiting the freedom of speech may be misused to curtail limit legitimate criticisms of the government and infringe the right. However, to prevent such misuse, the federal, court, the federal constitution entrusts the courts the power to judicially review any acts of parliament limiting this right. Chang Min Tajie, in the case of Madhavin Nair against public prosecutor, held that any condition limiting the exercise of the fundamental right to freedom of speech not falling within the four corners of Article 10, clauses 2, 3, and 4 cannot be valid. So it is the duty of the court to determine whether the law follows the limitations in the federal constitution or not. For example, in determining whether the Sedition Act is constitutional in the Mat case 2013, the Court of Appeal applied the reasonableness and proportionality test. It is only after the court decided that, um, concluded that the act is both reasonable and proportionate to protect the security of federation, did the court finally decide in favor of the Sedition Act that it was not unconstitutional as it followed the limitations in the constitution. It is clear that the freedom of speech is not something that is easily limited, and if, even if it is limited by parliament, it must be non-arbitrary and necessary. In conclusion, the crux of the issue today is that the freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. The concept that the freedom of expression is, is not absolute and has its limits which are put in place to prevent freedom of speech from escalating into something more dangerous, particularly incitement of discrimination, hostility and violence all things which jeopardizes our democracy rather than protects it. The freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed to protect the, the, democrat the democratic society we have today.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rosh Afiqa Kamaruddin, acting as the second speaker for the oppositions. Today, we as the opposition strongly believe that the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has not uh, provided sufficient safeguards to protect the rights. Before we come into the second arguments of the uh, of the oppositions, I would like to highlight the rebuttal of the second point for the government, in which the propositions of the government alleged that they wanted to uphold democracy for all by pretending that the freedom of expression and speech had been adequately guaranteed by our constitution. However, we need to come back to the reality that where the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia was still restricted for the citizens and not for all. Therefore, if the condition for the pro if the condition of the proposition wants to uphold democracy, it is by allowing the citizen to have an equal and transparent discussion as well. One cannot deny that freedom of speech and expression was very essential to create a healthy democracy. However, a healthy democracy can only be obtained where it allows the citizens to participate in political process by giving out their opinions towards the government and holding their government accountable for the corruption and decision that they made open our country. And this is very prominent for us to create a healthy democracy in our country. However, nowadays, it can be seen that many laws have been imposed by the parliaments that restrict freedom of speech and expression, such as the Sedition Act, the Printing Presses and Publication Act, the Communication and Multimedia Act and many other laws. Although at the surface, this law is to impose or limit uh, the freedoms of speech and expression for the sake of our country. However, this law are often vague in meaning and restrictive in nature, in which give the government wide discretion to interpret and enforce them. And this gives actually the power, uh, shows that the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia was not adequately guaranteed because we still have some restrictions that was vague in meaning giving absolute power for the government to interpret them and we still have a long way to go to build a more democratic and free Malaysia. Therefore, we will enter into the second argument of the opposition, in which the opposition believes that freedom of speech or expression is not adequately guaranteed because the government still limits freedom of speech and expression for the press and media through law. In which, in my argument, I will be focusing on the media and press and also artists to voice out their opinions or their freedoms of expression to this government. We know that Clause 2, Clause 3 and Clause 4 of Article 10 of the Federal Constitution give the right for the Parliament to impose a law that they deem that they deem necessary to restrict the freedom for citizens for the reasons mentioned in this article. However, due to these restrictions, it further lead to the government's dominant position in restricting the media which makes the citizen not get enough rights to freedom of speech and expression. And when the Malaysian government owns and controls a significant portion of the media in Malaysia, this gives the government a powerful tool to influence public opinion and to silence dissent which might involve them. And that's why freedom for media and press to give out their opinion is very prominent in our country, uh, in our in creating our democratic country. Because throughout the years, we have encountered many cases where the media was silent due to their opinion which was against again the principle held by the government. Therefore, the question here will be how far this power based upon the parliament is not being abused by the parliament itself and at the same time not restricting the freedom of expression, especially for media or citizens who express their opinion through their artworks. Firstly, the Sedition Act of Malaysia, which is a law that restricts freedoms of expression by criminalizing any speech, publication or action that is deemed to be seditious. And this law has been used to curtail the freedoms of the media and artists, in which, under the Sedition Act, individuals can be charged for criticizing the government, questioning the monarchy, or promote feelings of ill will and hostility between different racial or religious groups. However, the problem under this Sedition Act is that the broad and vague nature of the law allows our authorities to interpret it in ways that limit freedom of expression. For example, what can be interpreted as seditious? So, because of this wide meaning, it gives them absolute power for the government to interpret and enforce them by themselves. There are also instances of uh, censorship or certain artworks, films or writings have been banned or edited by the government bodies, which is limiting the ability of artists to impress and suffer freely. Not to mention that the Sedition Act itself had been used to restrict freedom of expression in the media in a number of ways, for example, for prosecuting journalists and bloggers for publishing articles that are critical towards the government, or ban the publication of books and magazines that are considered to be seditious and more. Therefore, it can be seen that the sedition act has a shielding effect on freedom of expression in the media in which it can make the journalists and artists are often reluctant to publish their articles or works that are critical of the government or to express dissenting views with the government because of their fear of being persecuted. And this self-censorship has a negative impact on public discourse and democracy. For instance, one notable case is where a cartoonist was arrested in Malaysia under the sedition act which is the case of Zulkifli and Ma'ul Haq which is popularly known as Zunar in which, in this case, Zunar is a political cartoonist known for his uh, sat satirical and critical cartoons targeting the government. However, in 2015, Zunar was arrested under the Sedition Act for his tweets criticizing the judiciary after the conviction of, of the opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim. The tweets alleged political interference in the trial and criticized the verdict, and he was charged with nine counts of sedition, which carried a maximum penalty of 43 years in prison. And although this charge was later dropped due to the repeal of the Sedition Act when the government, when the change of the government, this case, however, highlight the use of the Sedition Act to silence dissent and curtail artistic freedom in Malaysia. In which, in the case of Zulkifli bin S M Anwar Ul Haq and another against uh, and Ari Krishna Apar Aparau and others, mentioned that the judge mentioned that I find that objectively looking at it, 
The cartoons depicted in the book may be considered political satire by some, while others may regard them as being seditious. From here, we can see that there is a thin line difference between a political satire and seditious. However, due to the broad and vague definition of seditious and freedom of expression, it gives rights for the government to give us uh, it, it, it is unable to give us a clear definition on what can be constituted as seditious and what can be constituted as a political satire. And this ambiguity allows authorities to interpret the law in a way that stifles dissent and criticism of the government effectively limiting of freedom of expression. Secondly, social criticism through films or any artworks in media industry are still taboo and not accepted in Malaysia. And this is because the Malaysian government still maintains strict control over the film industry through censorship boards and regulations. For example, under the Finance Act, the Film Censorship Board LPF has become a powerful tool that can be used by the government to control the film industry and to silence dissents. Throughout the years, we can see that many films which contain social or political criticism were being restricted by the government, such as films like Babi, Want to Jaga, and more. Or although it seems like it is to secure the national security of the public, but at the same time, social criticism films often shed light on social societal problems, government misconduct, or issues that need attention. And by, and by restricting these films, the government can potentially prevent the public from being informed about such matters. And this lack of transparency and accountability can hinder the progress of society and impede efforts to addressing pressing issues. Not to mention that how, by restricting these uh, social criticism freedoms, it limits the freedom of expression, expression and speech, which is a fundamental right for, for citizens in democratic societies. In conclusion, it can be seen that Article 10 does not explicitly address the protection of media's expression, expressions and the challenge associated with it, in which it led to authorities making laws to restrict or curtail the freedoms of speech of the media based on their own discretion. And due to the vague and broad interpretation of their law itself, may also lead to potential of political and power abuse by the parliament, in which this law may be used to silence dissent and suppress criticism of the government. It is not a contention of the opposition to say that this freedom should not be given any limit to it. However, under Malaysian law, we believe that it is still vague about the, the, about the interpretations whether the restriction reasonably limits the privilege or not. Thus, it can be concluded that freedom of speech expressions given to the Malaysian citizen was not adequately guaranteed by the constitution and needs to and it still needs to be reviewed for not being too restrictive for the media, press and also artists to giving out their opinions. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening I bid to Mr. Adjudicators, side opposition and my fellow teammates. My name is Nur Ali Fikir Firdaus. I'm the third speaker of the government. So before I jump into the third argument on why we are supporting our motion of the day, allow me to read about the second speaker from the opposition side. Well, it is true that the government can impose limitation on freedom of speech and expression for the press and media through laws such as the Printing Presses and Publication Act, PPPA in Malaysia. It is important to consider the broader context and the reasons behind such limitations. Firstly, it is crucial to recognize that no absolute freedom exists without any limitation because all society requires some form of regulation to maintain order and protect public interest. So the government's ability to regulate that the media is not unique to Malaysia because many democratic countries have laws in place to ensure responsible journalism and prevent the dissemination of harmful or false information. So the Printing Process and Publication Act serves as a regulatory framework aimed at promoting responsible journalism and prevent the spreading of misinformation. So the government's power to revoke or suspend publishing permits under these acts is intended to hold media organizations accountable for their action and ensure that they adhere to ethical standards. So by doing so, the government aims to protect the public from potential harm caused by irresponsible reporting or the dissemination of false information. Moreover, it is worth noting that the Malaysian government has taken steps towards liberalizing media laws in recent years. Because the repeal of the Sedition Act in 2018, for example, marked a significant step forward in expanding freedom of speech in Malaysia. The government has also acknowledged the importance of press freedom in a democratic society and has expressed its commitment to upholding this principle. And additionally, it is important to consider that Freedom of speech is not an unlimited right, even in democratic society. It is subject to certain limitations such as the prohibition of hate speech, incitement to violation or defamation which are necessary to protect the right and reputation of individuals. So the government's ability to limit freedom of speech and expression through laws is aimed at balancing individual rights with the broader interests of society. In conclusion, 
While it is true that the government in Malaysia has the power to limit freedom of speech and expression for the press and media through laws like the PPPA, it is crucial to understand the underlying reasons for this limitation. The goal is not to suppress freedom of speech but to regulate it responsibly, ensuring the protection of public interest and maintaining social order. And next, allow me to move on to our third argument. So freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia also covers the right of education, of information and the right of media which is provided by the Federal Constitution of Malaysia. The right to education and freedom of speech and expression are indeed interconnected because both are fundamental rights recognized under the Malaysian Federal Constitution. The ability to exercise freedom of speech and expression effectively often re um, requires access to information and knowledge which can be obtained through education. Therefore, it can be argued that the right to education is a prerequisite for the meaningful exercise of freedom of speech and expression. Article 10 Clause 1A of the Federal Constitution states that every citizen has the right to freedom of speech and expression, which includes the freedom of information and press. Article 12 of the Federal Constitution in Malaysia, the right to education is principally expressed in Article 12 of the Federal Constitution. It ensures that every citizen has the right to an education according to rules that govern the national education system. Education serves as a catalyst for other freedom to be exercised. In addition, education empowers individuals by providing them with knowledge and skills that allow them to express their opinions, participate in peaceful assembly, establish association, and contribute to public dialogue. And in the context of the Malaysian Federal Constitution, Article 10 guarantees the right to freedom of speech and expression. However, this right can only be fully realized when individuals have access to education, as education empowers them to exercise their freedom of speech responsibly and intelligently. By acquiring knowledge through education, Individuals are better equipped to express their thoughts and opinion in a well-informed and constructive manner, leading to a more robust and informed public discourse. Next is right of press. It also comes under the meaning of freedom of speech and expression. This includes the freedom of the press, which grants journalists and media organizations the right to report, investigate and publish information without undue interference or censorship from the government. And the right of press is different from one country to another. So this can be seen in the case of Bennett Coleman and Union of India in 1973, where the court had upheld the notion that freedom of speech and expression includes freedom of the press. In India, limiting the number of pages in the newspaper is considered to be unconstitutional in India. This is because it restricts the freedom of press by hindering comprehensive coverage. However, the position in Malaysia differs as mentioned in the Court of Appeal in Utusan Melayu Berhad against Datuk Sri Diraja Haji Adnan bin Haji Yaakob 2016 where the judges quoted that so far as the freedom of press is concerned, it flows from the right to freedom of speech and expression as guaranteed by Article 10 Clause 1A of the Federal Constitution, the exercise of which shall at all times be protected and respected but subject to and no more than the permissible restrictions and may be imposed by federal law with clear and unequivocal language pursuant to Article 10 Clause 2A thereof. Meaning, everyone is free to use the right of press, however, such a freedom has limitations and it is not absolute. For example, the government imposes laws such as the Printing Presses and Publication Act, the PPPA, that requires all publishers and printing firms to obtain an annual permit to operate, which can be withdrawn without judicial review. The positive view is that the Printing Presses and Publication Act licensing rules are not designed to stifle free expression, but rather to ensure responsible journalism. These can promote journalistic integrity, ethical reporting, and accountability in the media ecosystem by having licensed publishers. So to conclude the third point of argument, both of this right, right to information and press are adequately guaranteed in the constitution for the citizens. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I beat to the proposition side and my fellow member my name is Raja Rafisa, the third speaker of the opposition, and I will be rebutting the point that was given by the third speaker, and I would like to 
to support my stand. So the third speaker of the proposition stated that the right to education in under Article 12 has opened the gate for other freedom to be exercised, including the freedom of the freedom of speech and expression. However, we would like to argue that under Article 12, it did not denote such thing. Article 12 only touches on which there shall not be an unlawful discrimination to be administered in education institution and it deserves to gain fund or financial aid from public authority for the maintenance or education of the students. So opening this kind of flat cake will lead to incorrect understanding and interpretation and in this discussion will be another whole area but not certainly not under Article 10. Furthermore, the third speaker has suggested that Article 10 had included the right of press to be protected and respected, but it must be subjected to restriction. However, it can be said that the right of press in Malaysia is still a work in progress because it's still not efficient or updated as citizens of Malaysia still misuse this right to claim unreasonable crown of action. For example, in the case of Muhammad Faisal bin Musa against Menteri Dalam Negeri, where the appealing book were banned by an order of Minister of, of Home Affairs, and in his affidavit, the minister stated that the publication had promoted uh, Shia teaching and were contrary to the accepted principle of Ali Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And in turn, this publication were seen as highly provocative and may affect the harmonious relationship among the Muslims in this country. So the High Court has upheld the minister order. However, the Court of Appeal have overruled these decisions. And the Court held that uh, in the minister word, the book is likely to be prejudiced, prejudiced to the public order, means that the threat need to be, uh, has a potential to happen or might to happen or probably to happen, and it was concluded that after all, it was concluded that uh, the action of the respondent to suddenly say that he was satisfied that, that the book are likely to be prejudicial to the public order is an outrageous um, ground, and it falls within unreasonableness and irrationality. And the court believed that the prohibition on the basis that there are several lines in the book that may control controversial statements were unreasonable. So therefore, the right of press might have existed, but it was not absolute because not only the publication needed to be considered, but also the validity and the reasonableness of the minister orders. So we, the opposition side, has disagreed that the freedom of speech has been guaranteed and this constitution has a provided a sufficient safeguard to protect the rights. So freedom of speech and expression is not adequately guaranteed because of speech is being used for political agenda and the interests of a certain political group despite there were a limitation imposed in Article 10. And there is a few restricted law for the security of the Federation of Public Order. For instance, Section 3 of the Seditious Act where it stated about seditious tendency and Section 233 of Communication and Multimedia Act, whereby any person by any means make a comment or suggestion which is false or obscene uh, may commit an offence. And one of the cases that highlighted on this issue is case of public prosecutor against of consent where the respondent had been charged with uttering seditious words in a speech delivered by him. So the case was brought to the session court but it was later transferred to the High Court. And it was held that the respondent uh, had gone beyond the limit of freedom of speech and there were some passages in the speech which was not a legitimate criticism but falls under seditious tendency. So this is an example case where hate speech has been curbed. However, it cannot be said for any other party out there that might not go to the court. Uh, and Tunku Muhris Tunku Manawi, which is the council chairman and one of the nine brothers, had hoped that there would be no more leaders who raised a racial or a religious issue with the purpose of his effort. And he said this during, uh, during the situation where our prime minister has been accused of being Israeli agent 
and accused for promoting Islamophobia. However, the usage of hate speech to incite hostility between races for political agenda had become a norm in our life. It is usually expected to happen during the general election, and there are some reasons that this situation could happen. Among them is because of the restriction on freedom of speech, and it also due to the nature of the citizen to be defensive and provocative if they are provoked or inside. And there are also a reason is also due to a rebellious tendency towards the non-absolute freedom of speech. And Parliament may make an effort to restrict the freedom of speech by imposing law to restrict certain speech. However, not none of them had completely curbed the issue of hate speech for political agenda because it already become a normal occurrence, especially in in political party during general election. And some politicians were arrested, but it did not deter the issue completely because there is still continuously a segment of race and racial, and some also use a constructive criticism to shield hate speech. Therefore, it seems better for to eradicate the imposed law because it was not different from restricting it. So, it can conclude that the opposition had proposed that the freedom of speech is not adequate to solve the issue of hate speech in a political agenda and its safeguard has not been proven to be efficient. So that's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, my bed to Mr. Adjudicator, the opposition and my fellow teammates. I am Sri Aisha, the fourth speaker for the government. The topic for our debate today is that freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has provided sufficient safeguards to protect the right. We, the government, strongly hold this statement to be true. The third speaker from the opposition has contended that despite restrictions imposed, freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed because hate speech is still being used for political agendas and for the interests of certain political groups. The third speaker also questioned the need for the restriction as laid down by Article 10 Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution as it is ineffective because hate speech is still being used as a political tool to incite hostility between races for political purposes. However, we, the government, believe that while it is true that hate speech exists and is sometimes used for political agendas in Malaysia, we submit that the opposition suggestion to completely eradicate this restriction imposed would do more harm than good. This is because while the existence of these laws merely act as a deterrent to deter others from attempting to incite hate speeches, it still serves a purpose that is as a legal recourse for when it does happen. For instance, we can refer to the case of public prosecutor against Oh Keng Seng, which was also cited by um, the third speaker of the opposition, where in this case the accused Oh Keng Seng was charged with seditious tendency for uttering seditious words in Mandarin. The federal court in this case held that the respondent had gone beyond the limits of beyond the limits of freedom of speech as there were passages in his speech which were utterances clearly having a seditious tendency of the sort and visage in both section 3, subsection 1a and c of the Seditions Act. Seditions Act. That is to bring onto hatred or contempt or to incite disaffection against the government and to promote ill will between ethnic groups in Malaysia. Thus, while it may be argued that hate speech is still being propagated, the law as laid down by Article 10 Clause 2A is there to serve the purpose of imposing reasonable restrictions to protect public order, security and the rights of others. Coming back to my submission today, I will be talking about another cr crucial aspect of freedom of speech, that is, the right to information. When it comes to democracy, freedom of speech and expression plays an essential role as Article 10 Clause 1A also includes the right to information. While Article 19 of the Declaration of Human Rights is not binding in Malaysia, it can be used as a reference in understanding the scope of freedom of speech and expression. Uh, Article 19 provides that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion ex and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. 
freedom of information or the right to know can be defined as the right of people to obtain information owned by government agencies and public institutions. And this right is accompanied by the freedom of thought, the freedom to seek, receive, and impart information. In Malaysia, there are no statutory provisions allowing the people to seek government information, and this may be due to restrictions imposed under Article 10, Clause 2, which provides that for national security and relations with other countries, Parliament may enact laws to restrict freedom of expression to protect freedom of expression, maintain public order or morality, and, pro and safeguard parliamentary uh, privileges to limit freedom of speech and expression. Additionally, the Court of Appeal in Haris Patila bin Muhammad Ibrahim against Suruhanjaya Pilihan Raya Malaysia, um, the court rejected the argument that there is a constitutional right to information. However, when it comes to democracy, the right of information is an essential part of building a participatory um, democracy. The basic idea behind a democracy is that the people are given the right and power in choosing their leaders. In other words, it establishes the right of the people to vote. Therefore, in order for citizens to make the right choice in choosing their leaders, the candidates, the electoral candidates, must be able to communicate their ideas without restriction. And this is guaranteed under Article 10, Clause 1A, or as political parties are allowed to campaign to tell their voters their policy, their stand and their plans for the country without restrictions. Communications, communication between electoral, electoral candidates Communications between electoral candidates and people and the people is crucial as it allows for the people to hear the view of their leaders as well as, as, well as express their thoughts and perspective. This is directly in line with a person's right to hold and receive opinions as well as their rights in accessing their information. Hence, the freedom of speech and expression includes communication and um, dissemin dissemination of information. In conclusion, while the scope of freedom of speech in Malaysia is quite narrow, the right to information is part of freedom of speech and expression that is guaranteed under Article 10, Clause 1A of the Federal Constitution, as it is an essential part of democracy. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I am Safiya Hana, the first speaker of the opposition. In debating the government's argument, the first speaker of the government have said Article 10, Clause 1 have guaranteed the right of the information as a crucial aspect of democracy. However, in the case of Haris Fatila Muhammad Ibrahim versus Royal Jaya Pilihan Raya Malaysia, where it, where it is about a voter's petition to the Election Commission, or known as EC, to gain relevant information pertaining to the delimitation process. Its purpose is to enable him to make an informed representation pursuant to Section 4 and Section 5 of the 13th Schedule of the Federal Constitution. Regardless, EC has failed to supply such information which led the appellant to make a petition before the High Court. Nonetheless, the court held that the appellant had failed to prove that he possessed such right under the Federal Constitution. The appellant cited the statute used in India, which is Right of Information Act 2005, and even refers to the position Canada has adopted, where their federal legislations have not only provided right to the information, but also facilitated such right. Nevertheless, the Court of Appeal observed that both the Indian or Canadian position should not be adopted in Malaysia, due to the reason that Malaysia does not have a specific statute which effectuates the right to information. The first speakers of the government point is clearly based on the interpretive implication of Article 10, Clause 1A, where the right to be derived from the express protection of freedom of speech and expression also includes the right to receive information, whereas no express law has ever mentioned such right. In contrast, there are laws which restrict information such as Official Secret Act 1972, where this law denies the right of access to public information or could even turn public information into the private property of the government of the government where it is out of reach from the public to obtain. Hence, since there is no express or strong provision which truly guarantees the right of information, while there is an express act which obstructs the free flow of information, I would say that the constitution did not adequately guarantee freedom of information as claimed by the government. Now, submitting my point as an opposition of this motion, Freedom of speech provided under Article 10 of the Constitution is not absolute as it can be restricted by the Parliament. According to Article 10, Clause 2, the Constitution gives the power to the Parliament 
to restrict the rights of the citizen in expressing themselves based on several grounds, such as matters concerning the security of the Federation, friendly relations, public order, and morality. It is also for the purpose of protecting the privileges of Parliament or any legislative assembly. Also, additionally, Parliament may also, by law, impose such restrictions to provide against contempt of court, defamation, or incitement to any offence. Referring to the case of Laudaki versus Public Prosecutor, the court affirmed that Article 10, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution guarantees the right of every citizen to freedom of speech, assembly, and association. These rights are, however, subjected to any law passed by Parliament. Limitations of freedom of speech and expression by the Parliament can be seen in the case of Mat Suhani B. Shafi'i v. Public Prosecutor. The appellate published an article in his blog concerning his opinion regarding laws of the Constitution of Selangor and was charged by Section 4 of the Sedition Act 1948. It was held in the Court of Appeal that the chapter on fundamental liberties in the Federal Constitution did not recognize absolute freedom. The question then arises. The grounds of which Parliament may decide on to restrict such freedom of speech are quite ambiguous. Article 10, Clause 2 mentions such restriction can be enforced when the Parliament deem it as necessary or expedient in the interest of those grounds mentioned. Not to mention, some grounds of restrictions are agreeable as there is no fixed interpretation regarding certain terms such as morality. To this day, the term morality is seen as subjective which may cause a lot of conflicts in the near future as what is seen as moral to one person can be regarded as immoral to another. Considering the world is evolving in accepting a much more open-mindedness concept, it is certain new issues pertaining to morality will become such a big argument. In conclusion, the parliament is the one who determines if the freedom of speech and expressions threatens the security, public orders, or morality. Hence, restrictions can be imposed if they decide as such. There is no clear line or obvious boundary as to what can be considered as necessary to restrict. Everything seems to be at the discretion of the parliament. If the freedom of speech and expressions can be controlled by the parliament, then it is enough to say the freedom provided under the constitution is not absolute and not sufficient. That's all from me. Thank you. Salam sejahtera and a very good morning I bid to Mr. Adjudicator, side opposition and my fellow teammates. This is the fifth speaker for the government and my name is Hema. So firstly, I will be rebutting the points made by the fourth speaker from the opposition side, where they have mentioned that freedom of speech provided under the constitution is not absolute and can be restricted by the parliament. They've also mentioned that everything is under the discretion of parliament. However, applying rule of law which means no one is above the law. When we refer to the statement made by them, it feels like they are going against rule of law. And also, referring to constitutional supremacy, which means that the constitution is supreme. So, how can they say that the parliament is the one which determines the freedom of speech and expression when the constitution is the supreme? So, yep. Yeah. Now I'll be going to my points. So firstly, I would like to agree with the statement of uh, freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has provided sufficient safeguard to protect the right. So I would be focusing on freedom of speech and expression uh, given to the parliament and also the state legislative. And at the same time, I would be looking, I would be looking at the explaining about the sufficient safeguards uh, taken to protect this right also. Okay, so firstly, uh, I would like to say that one of the most important places where freedom of speech is much needed and used is in the parliament. So this is a privilege which is given to all the members of parliament and the state legislative assembly to express their point of view 
freely without any fear that they will have uh, any legal consequences later on. So referring to the House of Parliament, uh, Parliament Privileges and Power Act 1952, and we were referring to Section 3 of the Act, where it has been mentioned about freedom of speech and debate, and it says that there shall be freedom of speech and debate or proceeding in the House, and such freedom of speech and debate or proceedings shall not be liable to be impeached or questioned in any court or tribunal or out of the House. So this shows uh, the freedom of the speech given to the members of uh, the parliament. Yep. So we will be also referring to the federal constitution. We'll be referring to two articles. Uh, firstly, I'll be referring to Article 63 of the federal constitution, which mentions about the parliamentary privileges, where it says that no person shall be liable to any proceeding in any court in respect of anything said during the proceeding in either house of parliament. So there's five clauses under this article. So the first three says that uh, anything said, um, anything, uh, I mean, any words given and also anything published. So this, whatever done, whatever has been done in the parliamentary proceeding can't be, and, I mean, the person can't be liable for any proceeding in any courts. But then that's the limitation given to this freedom of speech. And we can see this in the clause in, in Article 63, Clause 4 and 5. So in Clause 4, it says that this right is not applicable to a person charged under Article 10, Clause 4 or under Sedition Act 1948. And referring to Clause 5, it has been mentioned that a person can be liable for court proceeding if he has said anything about abolition of the constitutional position of Yang Dipertuan Agung as the supreme head of the federation or constitutional position of the ruler of the state. Other than that, we will be referring to Article 72 of the Federal Constitution, which mentions about privileges of legislative assembly. Actually, Article 63 and 72 is similar. They have five clauses in each of the articles. And the only difference is that Article 63 refers about parliamentary, uh, parli pri parliamentary privileges. However, Article 72 uh, mentions about privileges of legislative assembly. So we could see the clear uh, picture of uh, how freedom of speech and expression is adequately guaranteed in the parliament and also the sufficient safeguards taken to protect that, that right also. So other than that, we will be also referring to a case uh, where a case which is Abdul Rahman Talib against Sini Vasagam and another 1965. So the facts of this case is that during the proceeding, a parliamentary proceeding, the defendant moved for an adjournment to discuss the allegation that the plaintiff was a minister of health, was involved in a corrupt practice. Plaintiff denied the allegation and challenged the defendant to repeat his statement outside of parliament. So the defendant took up the challenge and repeated the allegation in a public meeting organized by the plaintiff in a Chinese assembly hall. Later on, the plaintiff claimed damages for libel and slander for the statement made at the Chinese assembly hall. However, the court held that the plaintiff could not take any civil action for the statement made in the parliament. However, he can take action or, uh, to the statements made at the Chinese Assembly Hall. So we could literally look at the freedom of speech and expression which is given to these members of parliament in the parliament and outside of the parliament. So we could see the how adequately it is given. I mean, the freedom of speech is an expression is the right is given and also the sufficient safeguards which have been taken i mean we could we could we could even see the limitation of freedom of speech and expression given to the members of the parliament and also the state legislative assembly so i would like to conclude by saying that this is clear that the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has provided sufficient safeguard to protect the rights so the freedom Actually, freedom of speech is an important right to be given, especially in the parliament. And through this, a lot of issues could be discussed openly and freely for betterment of the country. And at the same time, we, could, we, we have seen the limitation which has been given to freedom of speech and expression in the parliament too. So that's from me. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to everyone. Our motion for today is the freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the constitution has provided sufficient safeguards to protect the right. 
we, the opposition, oppose this motion. Before moving on to our final point, I would like to rebut the point given by the fifth speaker of the government, which is freedom of speech and expression is given to each and every individual. However, in her submission, she mainly focuses on the right of freedom, freedom of speech and expression to members of parliament, citing the House of Parliament Act, which gives freedom of speech and debate to the members of parliament in the parliamentary session and also Article 63 of the Federal Constitution, which provides parliamentary privilege, which safeguards only the minority group of people, which are the members of parliament. Even if this act and the Federal Constitution provides right to freedom of speech and expression, but this freedom is restricted by Sedition Act. Therefore, it defies the principle of democracy, which shall be applicable in our country. And the fifth speaker keeps talking about the members of parliament right to freedom of speech and expression. But what about the right of others? What about the right of the media, the press, the newspaper, and most importantly, the people? We should not restrict our debate today to the fact that the federal constitution safeguards and guarantees freedom of speech and expression to members of parliament only. We shall take into consideration, does the federal constitution guarantees others right to freedom of speech and expression as well? But even if the federal constitution guarantees such right, the pertinent question that shall be answered in our debate today is, is it sufficient? And to what extent does the federal constitution safeguards this right? Thus, this issue leads us to our final point, which is freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in our democracy because such right is restricted only to certain areas, thus defeating the principle of democracy, whereby every citizen should be given the right to actively participate in the governance of the country, which includes political matters. And this could only be done by sufficiently guaranteeing their rights to freedom of speech and expression in the highest law of the land, which is the federal constitution. Therefore, we submit that freedom of speech and expression is extremely limited when it comes to political issues. By virtue of Article 149 of the federal constitution, it gives the power to parliament to abrogate any laws governing human rights, which includes freedom of speech and expression. Subsequently, any law passed under Article 149 of the federal constitution will be considered as a special law thus is able to deny basic human rights, such as rights to freedom of speech and expression. And this right of freedom of speech and expression is really crucial and important, especially in a democratic country like ours, whereby every citizen, citizen shall have the right to freedom of speech and expression, shall has the right to voice out their opinions and thoughts on the governance of the country. For example, under Section 7, Subsection 1 of the Printing Presses and Publications Act 1984, it's provided that if a minister is satisfied that any publication contains matters which are prejudicial to the public interest, security and morality, among others, then the minister can prohibit such publication. However, the problem with this provision is that, number one, it does not clearly define as to what amounts to prejudice against public interest, security or morality. And secondly, it applies to any publication which includes newspaper and supposedly newspapers shall be used to educate the people and to disseminate information, especially about politics, as not everyone is well-versed in the topic of politics. And this also involves the people's right, as they have the right to know what is going on in the political matters in the country. Therefore, if the newspaper is not allowed to publish such articles which, which should be educational to the people, then how could we say that we are a democratic country when we restrict such freedom of speech and expression? And this act or this law has also been used as a tool to silence political opponents and subsequently manipulating the news delivered to the people. So therefore, although Article 10 of the Federal Constitution provides the guarantee to freedom of speech and expression, but the fact that such laws exist, such as the Printing Process and Publication Act, had made the so-called guarantee under Article 10 to be pointless, which proves our stance that Freedom of speech and expression in our democracy is not adequately guaranteed as such right is restricted only to certain areas, thus defeating the principle of democracy. Furthermore, the right to freedom of speech and expression is not adequately guaranteed in the federal constitution as the existence of Sedition Act 1948 has rendered the provision under Article 10 to be ineffective. So this act restricts freedom of speech and expression as anyone who is deemed responsible 
for, pu for a publication which has seditious tendency could be liable to a fine not exceeding 5,000 ringgit or to imprisonment which could amount to three years. So this is a tool used to shut the mouth of the public, especially in matters related to politics. It has also been used by the politicians or even leaders to tie, the, uh, to tie their political opponents so that they will not receive any restriction from them. So again, how could the government say that the federal constitution adequately provides and guarantees the right to freedom of speech and expression when these laws exist and they are capable of overriding the basic human right provided under Article 10, which is the right to freedom of speech and expression. Before I conclude my submission, I would like to reiterate my point, which is freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in a democracy as such right is restricted only to certain areas, which unfortunately does not include political matters, thus defeating the principle of democracy. Before I take my leave, allow me to reaffirm the opposition stance, which is freedom of speech and expression in Malaysia is not adequately guaranteed in our democracy and the federal constitution, as an individual's right of expression in social media is restricted. Secondly, the right of press and media is restricted through enactment of special laws. Third, hate speech is being used for political agenda and interest of certain groups of people. Fourth, it is not absolute and there is no clear line which limits the parliament power to enact such law which restricts the right. And finally, the right guaranteed under Article 10 of the Federal Constitution does not extend to political matters. Therefore, we, the opposition, proudly oppose this motion and that concludes our submission. Thank you.